Saba in their dwelling where they lived, that was a sign from Allah. It was a sign because of how incredible and marvelous that place was. And why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that there was an ayah, a sign? And in another ayah, ayat, many signs in the story of Saba. What made this story so special and unique that Allah chose to make it everlasting? That place, Allah blessed them with beautiful gardens. Allah gave them crop and produce and such beauty that for as far as the eye could see, it was absolutely amazing on either side. Because they were drowning in the goodness that Allah bestowed upon them. They turned away from Allah. They reneged. They went out of the worship of Allah. Allah says, فأعرضوا. Allah says, they turned away. They didn't listen to us. So what did we do? Allah says, I gave permission for the dam to break open and we sent upon them the flood. The dam collapsed. And torrents of water now were gushing onto their lands, flattening their crops and uprooting their trees. And we replaced their good gardens with that which was totally destroyed. Every fruit that came out of there was inedible. Flower, anything that happened there was burnt and destroyed. It was gone and Allah says we took it away from them completely. We turned it totally upside down. As a result of what? Ingratitude. Ingratitude. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The story of Saba. And in fact, you encounter them before that in the Quran if you're reading it in sequence when Allah Azza Jal speaks about Sulaiman alayhi salam and the bird that goes and tells Sulaiman that there are found a woman who is a queen over a people who are worshipping the sun. And they are described in the Quran and they describe themselves as people of might and she had this mighty incredible throne. This was a kingdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed in one of the most breathtaking and jaw-dropping of ways. In every sense of the word, in terms of dunya, in terms of prophets, in terms of the air, in terms of rivers, in terms of fruits, Allah had blessed the kingdom of Saba like something you and I have never seen before. Messengers were sent to the people of Saba, reminding them that all you need to do is benefit and enjoy the khair, the goodness Allah has given you whilst thanking Allah for what He has given you and staying away from haram. And they did that for a certain period of time. So we know about Sada from, Sada from that story that they are a strong, wealthy, mighty people who lived in Yemen. So when we come also now to the story of Saba here in Surah Saba, Allah Azza wa wants to tell us the story. He's telling the story to Quraysh and those who are around, but also telling us the story, how Allah Azza wa can change the fortunes of a people because of what they do. And there's a lot to learn from it, inshaAllah. So Allah Azza wa says here, لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَئٍ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةٍ Allah said, certainly there was a sign in the homeland for the people of Saba. Allah said, we gave them two huge gardens, two meadows. One to the right and one to the left. All they would see is green landscape. All they would breathe is the freshest and purest of air. All they would drink is the purest of water. And all what they experienced during their travels was safety and security. It was a completely sterile, disease-free environment. The trees were so dense. Rivers were gushing through these two gardens of the people of Saba. And they had a dam. They had a dam that was built, holding that back the water and accessing it as they wished. And therefore they were hardly reliant upon rainwater at all. It was the greatest civilization of that time frame. So this is after the time of Sulaiman, uh, by a few generations, Allah is mentioning this, uh, this incident of Saba. And they were one of the first civilizations to construct a dam to block that water and to utilize that water that would come. And they built a magnificent city that lasted many generations at the base of the dam. Allah said it was baldatun tayyibah, a pure land, a beautiful land. Two gardens, one to the right and one to the left. It was absolutely amazing on either side. Allah says, we gave them gardens. And we told them one thing. We only told them, be thankful. 
be thankful to he who gave you such a beautiful place of dwelling and he is indeed a lord who is forgiving be thankful could anybody wish for anything more than that a land that wants to give and give and you have a lord who wants to forgive and forgive paradise on earth this was a kingdom of heaven in dunya they say that a woman would carry a basket on her head and she would make her way through the gardens and the basket would be empty but by the time she would walk out of the other side of the garden the basket would be filled with all types of fruits without her needing to reach out for anything ripe fruits dear brothers and sisters falling all over the place kingdom of heaven paradise on earth allah gave them so much just show gratitude to allah and be patient and resist haram and they did that for some time but then they began to change because they were drowning in the goodness that Allah bestowed upon them. They turned away from Allah. They reneged. They went out of the worship of Allah. Allah says, فَأَعْرَضُوا Allah says, they turned away. They didn't listen to us. So what did we do? Allah says, I gave permission for the dam to break open and we sent upon them the flood. The dam collapsed. And torrents of water now were gushing onto their lands flattening their crops and uprooting their trees and turning sweet fruit so bitter and turning security and safety into fear and hardship everything was destroyed within the blink of an eye because a'radu they turned away Allah said and we replaced them with the two gardens the two beautiful gardens that they had once upon a time we replaced them with two other gardens but what were their characteristics ya Allah listen and compare Two gardens of bitter fruit, low quality trees, thorny food, a few low trees here and there. That was the end of the civilization of Saba. And this was when the children, the ten children of Saba, they dispersed into the land. Allah says, We compensated them with this because they were ungrateful. Because they disbelieved. And this is how we behave with everybody who is ungrateful, Allah said. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the ayah after this, draws our attention to yet another blessing that He had given the people of Saba. Listen to this. Listen to this beauty that they had before the destruction. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, and between the people of Yemen and the people of Sham, that land that we have blessed, Allah said, between these destinations, we had placed cities. Cities that were visible. Cities that could easily be seen. What does that mean? The people of Saba, like everybody else, they needed to travel up and down the country for business reasons. But their business route was very different. Subhanallah in Azim. They had service stations. From Yemen all the way to Asham, we had placed cities as stations. So when they were traveling from Asham to Yemen and Yemen to Asham, they would walk out of their home, dear brothers and sisters, without any luggage, no packing. They didn't need to. They would leave their home and enter a city, eat and drink and rest, and then enter another city, eat and drink and rest till they arrive at Asham and they would do the same thing back. Visible cities that could be seen. I hear you ask, what about navigation? Did they need maps? Did they know the way? Allah said, وَقَدَّرْنَا فِيهَا السَّيْرِ and we had made the distances from city to city measured and well known. They did not get confused. I hear you asking now about the security. Was there any fear to travel in the morning or the night? Allah said to them, Siru fiha layaliya wa ayyaman amin. Travel, make your travel in the morning or in the night. If you wish, you will be completely secure. Security, food, drink, land, Beautiful air, money, water, everything man could wish for in the life of this world. But however, they became bored with the favor of Allah. This was the reality. They became tired with the goodness Allah gave them. And they made a very strange dua that you will not believe when you hear it. What did they say? They said, Oh, our Lord, we ask you please to lengthen the distance during our travel. Make it long. 
In other words, oh Allah, we're tired of this goodness you've given us. We want to travel long distances and we want to be thirsty in the deserts and we want to be scared like everybody else. We don't want this comfort. It's too much. Allah said, وَظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They wronged themselves. And dear brother, dear sister, I know when you hear this request of the people of Sabah, you may think to yourself, this is so strange. I say it is very strange, but it is not uncommon. And if you look around you very carefully, you will realize that there are some people you know who are doing exactly what the people of Sabah did when they made that dua. Like a man or a woman whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him or her with marriage, a beautiful spouse, a handsome husband, a beautiful woman, a righteous individual, a God-fearing person. But this person chooses to pursue another relationship outside of the pale of marriage behind closed doors. That is a person who became bored with the favor of Allah, like the people of Sabah did. So what will be the fate of such people? It will be the exact same fate of the people of Sabah. What was the fate of the people of Sabah? فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَحَدِيثٌ We made them into stories. Allah said, we destroyed the people of Sabah and we made them into a narration. What do you now see of Sabah? What do you hear of Sabah? Nothing. It's now become a tale that we discuss. فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَحَدِيثٌ Allah said, وَمَزَّقْنَاهُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقْ And we scattered them, dispersed them, disunited them with a major dispersion, Allah says, all over the world. They left Yemen. What used to be a unified kingdom of happiness and harmony, paradise on earth, became a smashed to pieces community, fragmented society, torn into groups and tribes traveling the world trying to find a new home. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the story of Sabah telling us that not everybody will benefit from this story. Allah says, indeed, there are signs in this for every person who is patient and grateful. Allah tells you, these are the people who will benefit. These are the people who will cry when they hear the story of Sabah. These are the people who will rush home to say, Ya Rabbi, what changes do I need to make? And what sins must I eliminate? Because I want to be grateful and patient. I don't want to have the outcome of the people of Sabah. Imam Ahmad narrates in his Musnad on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas that a man came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking him about Sabah. What is it the name of a country, a land, a man? What is Sabah? He said. Is it the name of a man? Is it the name of a woman? Is it the name of a land? And the Messenger وسلم, said to him, Sabah is the name of a man who had ten children. Six of them stayed in Yemen and four of them went to Asham. We are speaking about Arabs. We are speaking about the origins of the pure Arabs, the third category of Arabs, al arabul Aribah. They come from this man, Saba. He said six of the children of Saba were in Yemen. This was their homeland. And they were Mathij and Kindah and Al-Azd and Al-Ash'ariyun and Himyar and Anmar. And he said, as for the four from the children of Sabah who went to Asham, Great Assyria, they were Lachm and Judam and Amilah and Ghassan. And they were all living in Yemen once upon a time, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the dam to break and to destroy the people of Sabah, they were dispersed and scattered. Six of the children of Sabah stayed in Yemen and four of them migrated to Asham. And therefore, if somebody asks you, when did the Arabs first appear in the land of Asham, Palestine, Jordan, and Lebanon, and Syria? We say to them, they migrated there after the dam of Saba broke down and they were dispersed and the Arabs made their way to Asham. And these were not the direct children of Saba, by the way, as Imam Ibn Kathir, he said. These are the descendants of Saba, whether they were his grandchildren or further down the line. Before narrating the story of Sabah in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Dawood and Sulaiman And what was the quality of these two? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them many blessings, many abilities and many miracles. 
and what was their response they were always thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given them more and more so they are our role models so repent to allah and be patient and always thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every blessing and thanking allah is not only through words it is also through the actions act with gratitude and thanks to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the story of saba now we are moving to another interesting story and that is the story of barsisa صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك